want you to learn why, okay? Okay, so listen. Test corrections, test corrections. Are you kidding? Eliza's? Anybody, anybody have Eliza's by accident? Is it stuck in between somebody? Okay, hang on, Eliza. I'm going to put you in the wrong pile. Thank you for speaking up. It would be funny if you got like 100 to So, policy here. Um, you see where, do you know where the policy can be found? Where can the test rewrite policy be found? Here it is. Where can it be found? Where is this? Where am I? The I button. Yay! Oh. Okay, so I'm going to go over it. I'm going to go over the policy now. But you have to go back to Number one, that's highlighted. You know, Corrections can be made with assistance from your notes and textbook, but not with other students. So I don't want you to discuss. You can talk and work and stuff, but I don't want you to say, what you get for number 12? And then check it. By the way, there's two different versions of the test. You look at the top corner of your test. If it's green, you got the green test. Top corner, if it's in blue, you got the blue test. Okay? And so there are different, different questions in different orders. And that kind of stuff, okay? Not a whole lot of difference, but enough to differentiate between the two. A couple questions, yeah. Okay, so there's some, there's one question, uh, question 11 or question 12. 11 if it's green, uh, 12 if it's blue. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I didn't like that question in the end. I felt like it was too close to, it could be either limiting factors or environmental resistance. So you know what I did? I said, screw it. I'm giving everybody plus two. Oh, no. So you see that on the top in the points. I'm trying to get very transparent. It's not a grade. You can see the number. I gave you plus two. All right. I gave everybody. Even if you got it right, plus two. Because there's no number. Right? Everybody got plus two. Okay? Does that sound all right? So don't worry about test corrections with that. And don't worry about test corrections on the extra credit, because you're not going to get extra credit after the fact. All right, we'll take questions, Alex. Wait, so how many points can you get back? Yes, yeah, so how many points can you get back? It's, it's not a lot. It's a quarter of the point. So a quarter of two is? A half. half. Point five. Like, half. Oh, point five, yeah. Is it half? So you get a half a point. It's not a lot, but it's something. It could make a, you know, you do the math and look at it. But really, the opportunity is to learn how to take these tests, right? AP, the AP curriculum is designed to be tough. The questions are ruthless. Therefore, I do that. Remember, remember that we are Proctor and that I have the same weight to test and the same weight on field work. So all this pond work, all your blogs are worth the same in weight as a test. So here, let me give you one last strategy, ladies and gentlemen. I was saying this before everybody came in. I have yet to grade your second blog, which is the one about the pond study, kind of introducing the pond study to your readers. If you know that you've made mistakes on it, like let's say, for example, you didn't cite your images, you can change that. I haven't graded them yet. I'm going to tonight. But you know that there's always going to be a lull with blogs. I have to get to everybody at the exact same time. You should strategically use that to your advantage. You should do good work with proofreading and getting the, the main stuff together. But then if you notice there's some error or whatever, you have a chance to correct something for it. Why not? I'll go with Alex anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, did you um, count any of this towards our grade? Yeah, they're plus two. Each one of those is two points. So. Yeah. The total points for the for the test is 86 because there's 43 questions times two, right? Mm -hmm. So every single question is two points. Okay. Yeah. So that those are gimmies, right? Those are six points. If you, if you answer, no matter how you answered it, it's an answer. Yeah. Those are for me okay. to learn about how you're learning. Whatever you gave me, I, I need reflective stuff yeah. to help me be a better teacher. Even though we're on an AP death march on one level. We're also really trying to learn stuff, right? Yeah. And so I need to know. Like I heard a lot of people say, Easter Island. I knew that upside down and backwards, inside out. Nothing. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, you can ask me. We'll do a couple more questions.
Actually, Liza was next. I need to honor that, so uh, she'd be next. Yeah. Um, it's about the blog. Oh, the big one? The big report? Yeah, should we? Is there a catch? Yeah, but we're going to talk about all the pond stuff pretty soon. Can we wait on it yeah. and just stay on the task? Thanks, Liza. Thanks. Okay, what was your question? Uh, I'll take two more questions about the text. Number 35. Number 35. I don't remember which question that is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so 35. I think everybody had the same number 35. It's about crayfish fighting over, several crayfish fighting over a single resource. I thought that was, what's number again? Number 35. Wait, for It's a type of competition. Number 35. It's for both. It's on both. I think it's the same. Green, yeah. Blue, yeah. If, you're, if they're fighting, if they're the same species as crayfish, they're fighting over a limited resource, then it is what kind of competition? Intra. Intra. Oh. It's the intra versus intra, right? Wait, yes. so when you do corrections, um, they're doing those? Yeah. 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 Say what? They're counting. Good, you have a mistake? Yeah. Make sure, okay, let me look at that in a second. Last thing about test corrections. The way you do test corrections is you're not just going to write B, C, A, do that. You're going to write out the whole question. You can type it, or you can do it by hand. And the reason why I'm having you engage in it this way is there's some neuroscience that says if you interact with the question more deliberately, you may remember it correctly. It's harder to, to, to relearn something after you've learned it incorrectly. It's, it's harder. So you got, I need you to write it all the way out, the question and the answer. You know, so for 35, when several little crayfish find over limited resource data is intraspecific competition. You're going to write it all the way out. And you have a little separate piece of paper, you can give me the whole test back, and then I can look it over, make sure there are no mistakes. Oh, so for every question. Okay, everybody's asking questions once. So for every question, even if it's correct, you do that? Yeah. No, you don't. Oh, let's so just say incorrect ones. You All right, then, yeah, we're trying to learn from mistakes. Would you have to write like more about it? No. Or just the. Uh, no, okay. just rewrite the question That's and the answer. Oh. oh. Yeah, so I don't want you to say, yeah. So anything. you don't have to find like evidence? No, no, I'm not going to make you work that hard. Wait, uh, do you want us to like, give all of the, like, the ABC? No, just give me the answer. I'm trying to get you to lay down a new memory to help you relearn it, okay? And I'm, I'm trying to do it in a way that doesn't become an entire burden when we got all this other material to learn, right? Alex? Um, and you said not working with other students, not that you like asking the answer, but if you don't understand why you left Sure, me. that's fine. I just don't want to, I don't want to come in here and see like DJ and Connor going, what'd you get for number four? And writing it down right yeah. then and there. I will <laughs> shut it all down and nobody will get test corrections. I want everybody to hear that. Okay. If I catch anybody in this class working with anybody else, like, you know, not honestly, you know, just taking the answer across, you're not really valuing the learning thing, nobody will get the points. I don't want to tolerate this stuff. I don't want to play those games, mm -hmm. right? We're really here to learn in a collegiate way. So please respect that and know that there's a severe consequence only in place because I'm trying to deter you from doing it. So you can ask your book, all right? Okay. So you submit this, the, it, the next class, that you get the t when you get your test, you have to submit corrections by the next class. So for you guys, do we have class tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. So it's due tomorrow. Yeah. The corrections. Okay. okay? So Sorry. Yeah, we'll be on my yeah, nope. I'm not going to put on my proctor because it's not going to apply to everybody. So you should write it down and make up your own plan. Let me give you those moments now. I'll take one last question about the test and then we move on. Um, we'll blank up here. I'm going to just make sure that I've covered everything of... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Can you correct extra credit questions or no? No, there's no point. All right. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, can I just ask about 29, the food web? The food web? Oh, yeah, let's ask about that. So the Arctic food web, different groups had different questions. Which question did you have? You know that. Are you asking specifically about that question? Wait, I just figured out. Uh, yeah, I think you can figure it out. Yes? Well, I, I don't know, I just didn't answer one of the questions. Does that count for getting test? You should do test yeah. Yeah. Okay? All right, let's put away the test for now. Let's get that out of our head. Mm -hmm. Know that you can do, you can do the test corrections to change that percentage. 
know that the blog of the grade tonight is going to change your overall average. Your average is constantly shifting. And we've got an even bigger blog due in about a week, you know, due on November 1st, about the pond. And Eliza had a question about that. So let's go to you, Eliza. Um, no, you can you can uh, take that information you can add to that. You can take whatever you wrote you feel like is accurate and supportive. And you can add it to your big report that you can place in your next post. Wait, and is that one we already like turned in as a separate block? It's a separate block. Okay. It's mainly the reason why I did that is to set you up, kind of get you feeling, good feeling about the blog. It's also easy points. There's also another chance to see how you write. Yeah. I want to give you another chance to learn from blogging before you get this big one. Is that the one you're grading tonight? The one yeah. just like about like the procedures? Yes. But without the like procedures? Like we didn't have right. It's just like anything. what are we doing? How are we going to go about and do it? And you, just, you just did that really briefly. Okay. All of you put something in there. So. Yes? How do we add to it? I mean, you can just click on it. Like, edit. You, well, wait, your blog, no, you're going to take that information and create a whole new post. The whole study will be a separate post. No, I know, but if we okay. want to, like, like, you can, like, go over to Sorry, I'm listening to Lucy. If we want to, like, make changes, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, you go to an edit button. Oh, okay. And you can edit it right there. Charlotte was right. Okay. Thank you, Charlotte. And um, does that have the same length and structure as the last blog? This is much shorter. shorter. Yeah. It's way okay. shorter. Do you need pictures in as well? I always want, always want you to hit the rubric, because there's just not as much to describe, right? Okay. We can go to three different stops. We can do three different things. It's like mainly what are we doing and how are we going about it? Okay. That's the main thing to, to get to the reader. Okay? I think you could be fun. And I haven't graded your first one yet, so <laughs> your first on the list in that. All right. So let's talk about some of the data and what it means. So here's the master data sheet. I think everybody has access to this. And you can see, uh, is, this, is this our sheet here? A block, yeah. And so we can see that some people put in data already. So we have uh, day three that we have to do. Uh, we're not doing it today. Why are we doing it today? Rain. Why is rain a problem? Is it, oh, it affects the Go ahead, Alex, yeah. Like the circulation, like movement of the feces on people's face and the drip. Like it's going to change, yeah, it's going to change interactions in the pond. You're right. Connor, oh no, I guess you don't have your hand. Okay, Amy. The acidity of the pond. The acidity of the pond could be changing. Why? Because rain has a lot of acid. Rain could, it can be acidic. That's true. Sam, Sam do you want to add this something? It's going to do with just the days. You know that practice day when we first went out? Yes. Does that one count? We really? the same one for ours. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um, the best the best way to do rigorous uh, study on this is you want to be able to sample the abiotic yeah. information and biotic information the same day. Switch that. Yeah. So yeah, please move that one away. And so we should have three solid days. So we have one more day of sampling to do, right? Yeah. Right with abiotic and with biotics. So what we're trying to figure out is is this pond healthy? Now before we even started this, what do you think? Did you think that the do you think the pond is healthy? No. Like be, before, like I know we should have done this hypothesis business before we started. Yeah. But what were your preconceived notions? So you said no. Any everybody else agree with that? Or do you have a preconceived notion that the pond was probably healthy? My reason for saying that it wasn't healthy, you said that we were dredging the pond that it was Right, yeah. Healthy. See, yeah, there's a lot of information out there that makes you feel like yeah. yeah, dredging. Yeah, people throw things at the like yeah. yeah. So there's a perception of grossness about it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be, you know, we'll look at all that stuff and see if it's healthy or not. What do you, now when we think about health, what would be the, what would be an indicator of health in the pond? The indicator species. <laughs> yeah, in, indicator species. Their abundance would be an indication if it's healthy. Clear. More of those sensitive. Uh, indicator species like mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies uh, would, would say it's more healthy. Say again? Plant growth. Plant growth. The clarity of water. 
clarity of water, all those kind of different components, the A, B, C, D, E's, all in certain balance. But we don't know what they should be. And the pond isn't a fixed entity, right? It's changing because it's alive. It's a living system. Uh, so we, we have some data. I don't know if, let's take a look and see if C Block has put anything up there. C Block hasn't put anything in there. And it looks like uh, E Block's been putting in information, which is great. So um, one of the things I, wanted, I want you to notice right away is that there's species here that are highlighted. Those have video links if you want to learn a little bit more about them, because eventually we're gonna, we want to talk about the species interaction between some of these creatures in the pond. You know, we've been reading in chapter four about all these species interactions, food webs. Can we build a food web out of this? Eventually we're gonna try. Eventually we're gonna try. We're gonna be going back and forth from chapter four, looking at community interactions. And then we're going to chapter five, where we're looking at the abiotic impacts on the community, in other words, the ecosystem, right? So, in our assignment calendar, it's a little jumbled right now, because right now, according to our calendar for A block, for you guys, we are supposed to have finished, or started to finish. So it looks like a lot of this stuff is going to shift over a day, okay? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to shift over the day, due date for the lab, for the final writing. I don't think we have to. We'll see. But this day right here on Thursday, tomorrow, when I was planning on with the Simpson Diversity Index, this requires all our data to be in. So we can't do this number. And this, this step here is really important because it'll take the species that we're observing and we'll run it through a statistical model that'll make it more quantifiable than, uh, and give us a number that measures the abundance of species plus the richness of diversity. So an example would be, if we went to, let's, let me go to the data. So if we look at, nobody's put in some animal studies. Oh yeah, we have here. So site three, take a look at site three. So if we look at site three here, can you see this okay? Is this too, can you guys see it in the back? Can you see this, these numbers? Oh, no. No. No, wait. Well, let's, let's just take a look at this. Let's go right. Reset the light now. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, can one of you just take up lights and then hopefully the video recording will show up the numbers, but uh, I'll explain it too. But if you look at this sheet, this is, you know, this is our block. This is site three, and we're looking at all these animals. And we have the first day, we have one dragonfly nymph, we have two, two helgamites. I don't know if we saw helgamites. They shouldn't be there. We saw helgamites. Really? I'm pretty sure. You have a photo? I want to see that. I want to see that. Oh, yeah, that's cool. If you did, that's really. Or I just thought that it was a helgamite. That's fine. Photo evidence helps. Uh, midge larvae, and then we have mayflies. We had a lot. They had a lot of mayflies yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I witnessed that. Yeah. So what's interesting is that, that the diversity, Matt, this diversity of, of species, different types of species, is what we call richness, and then abundance is how many of each one, and that matters because if we take uh, an example of diversity, just like at uh, in, in the pond, and we just had. Let's say we only had one, like this damsel fly, and if only one, one doesn't really represent diversity very well, right? And when we do it through a statistical model, we're gonna discover that we're, this is an outlier. And so we have to we have to do a certain mathematical model to get rid of these outliers to make sure it's really dimensional. Right, that's for another day on that diversity stuff. It's interesting about the how Any other any other questions right now on our sampling and our efforts so far for this study? Is anybody uh, unsure about what we're doing and how we're doing it? So I'm trying to assess what to do today since I feel like, uh, yeah, 
you know, let's take a moment, I'll tear it down, and I'm going to get, I'll get ready for the next lesson. So let's take two to three minutes, let's take three minutes to insert any data that you have for the first and second day, okay? And get it up there. Um, be sure you double check stuff, it's great. Yeah. 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 I've got a lot of spare both of scales. I take one, we just went over the stuff, right? We didn't do any abiotics, right? Yeah. It's only a good testing day for testing biotic and abiotic. And then we're witnessing cycles. So we're doing ABC. We're doing all three. So just take a moment to put that down up. I'm going to get, I'm going to get set for this next activity. <laughs> so I'm going to brought that up. That's one of the abiotics we're trying to test, but I've been having uh, technical difficulties with our, I have like a, a portable digital device that measures dissolved oxygen, and I thought it was a battery issue, and now the batteries are working, brand new batteries are working on it, so. which is going to be a bummer if we don't get it, because it's a pretty crucial part. What was that? Should we add that yeah, yeah, that is. They're also known as snow fleas. Snow fleas? So double check to see if that's already on there. Are those really small, like, yeah. snow bugs? Yeah, they're sitting on the top of the water. They're really small. Yeah. But do they go underwater? Should I? I'm going to just... I think we saw. Do you want me to just take some water? Yeah. It's all done. We haven't measured yet. I've had a... Oh, yeah. They may they may really throw out the yeah, We're gonna talk about phosphate in a little bit here. I think we're gonna go past the three minutes. Should we do
I'm going to assume it all then. So um, it's going to be one of the cycles. Just to stay with our reading in the chapter. Is it, 
which is e about environmental systems. Okay. I'm trying to go to the cycle, so don't stare directly at it. <laughs> Here we go. So yes, we have it cycling through. It goes. It goes. And what's interesting about all all of these nutrients is that it is moving from one system to another. So with water, it's going from the aquatic state, you know, the liquid state, and it's moving into the atmosphere. And then the atmosphere moves it around, and it condenses, and then it can fall back into the water, or it can fall into the land as precipitate, whichever form that is, right? We have a large variety of forms of pre pre uh, precipitate. We could be sleet, we could be snow, we could be fog, et cetera. And then it eventually either trickles down into the ground and then into rivers and streams and stuff, or it trickles all the way down the ground and into an aquifer where it stays for a long period of time. So our job as environmental science students is to learn some of the technical terms to describe where things are going. And we're going to look at phosphorus intimately today. Uh, so all these nutrients, we call these things biogeochemicals, uh, uh, we call nutrients, when nutrients are moving, sorry, we call it biogeochemical cycles because it's usually moving from a life form, bio, to maybe the lithosphere, that's geology, and, or it could be moving to the atmosphere or water, which is a chemical state, right? So, for example, with water, we have water in us, you exhale it, and you can see water coming out of you on a cold day because it instantly condenses in the cold air. See the little cloud, right? Bio goes out, it's in a chemical form of water. It goes, condenses, it drops down the ground, gets trapped in there, gets pulled up through a plant, evaporates again, and keeps cycling through different ecosystems, right? and through different systems. Okay, so we have all this stuff about moving through all these things. Hydrosphere is water. Lithosphere is earth, earth stuff. So geology, rocks, first class. Phosphor. There is another one on here. Anybody's taking climate science? I think a couple of you have taken climate science before. What sphere is not mentioned in this line right here? Anybody know? No. It, it's really another version of the hydrosphere. It's called the cryosphere. What is the cryosphere? It's another version of the hydrosphere. It's where it's frozen, it stays locked away, frozen. So that's all it is. So here are the terms that are important: is is pools and reservoirs and this thing called flux. So we look at these things here. These these terms we use a lot to describe how it's moving. That's flux. And how fast it's moving. That's flux. And the pools or reservoirs is where they're going to sit and be stored, and how long they're going to stay. Okay, so there's two types of places where they stay. There's a source, which is a pool that is releasing a lot of it. And then there's a sink, that's, the one, that's a pool or reservoir that is storing a lot of it. So with water, before we get into phosphates, with water, what is a good version of a sink? It's storing a lot of water that it's releasing. Where do we find water just remaining? Oh, like reservoirs. Well, I heard it. Reservoirs? Be more specific because we have this other word, reservoir. Watershed. You said in the. Where's a reservoir? A water reservoir, they could be two different terms. These are cultural. Where does water get stored where it won't evaporate? Lake is going to evaporate, right? We went to Pleasant Lake, we felt it was warm, so uh, it goes evaporating. Ocean. Ocean's exposed to sun, too, so it can't be those two. It can't be a like surface a water. Or somewhere with like shading from trees. There, in, well, here it is. This, this is the water you can't see. That's why I asked you this. Well, oh, it's underground. Kind of it's going to be in the ground. Groundwater. And there's underground aquifers, uh, which are reservoirs of water under the ground. And they don't evaporate, they don't typically move. Some of them are sealed off, they're called fossil water. So they don't, they accept more nutrients than it releases, except for water than it releases, or it's supposed to until we put a well into it. Okay, what's a good example of a source of water for this, this, this 
It has a high rate of flux. It's moving a lot of water out of it. Then it's accepting it. Like small pools of water. Okay, that smaller mean? pools of water. Puddle? Yeah, a puddle. Good. What would a vertical pool be? A Wait. vertical would be this. Because it only stores it for a very brief amount of time, typically, usually for the spring. Something even shorter, shorter amounts of time. Think small. A drop of water, okay. Rain, it may evaporate yeah. quickly off the street. Yeah. All right? It's biogeochemical. Can you think of a bio? Wait, uh, a living pool. Uh, That's a source of water. Releases more water than it accepts. Like a waterfall? Is that the example? That's not water. Wait, what about if no, a biology? A biology. What's a, a Wait, biological I think organism? Most organisms are going to release more oh, than no. they store, right? I've released some water today. You're doing it now by breathing. Breathe on that glass over there, it's going to condense. Every time you breathe, you release a bit of water. That's why you're constantly replenishing, right? You're sweating it off, you're cooling off, you're excreting, either through sweat or you know, elimination. All right, well, we're not going to get as far as I want, but sorry. So here's just a visual diagram of of how we move from reservoirs. So when a source is where it's releasing more, so there's a big area, meaning it's having a high amount of flux. So like a, a river or a lake has more water evaporating than, well, I was gonna say a glacier, but depending on where the glacier is, we may have that reverse, right? So it depends on what, what's happening. Okay, the so water cycle. All right, so let's take a look at phosphates. Don't stare at this and make you dizzy. You're going to teach each other the rest of these. Oh gosh, where's phosphorus? Okay, phosphorus. Here's phosphorus. You know it's on phosphorus. Pretty important. Key words. I've already mentioned that is an essential element for life. Every living organism needs phosphorus for ATP, DNA, RNA, all that stuff. And so the phosphorus cycle is just where, you know, the possible roots that it's taking as it moves from life form to lithosphere. It's all the different spheres, okay? All right, phosphorus. Phosphorus, what's really interesting about phosphorus is that we mine it. Omnivore's dilemma, dilemma. We mine it and we put it into synthetic fertilizers. Phosphorus and nitrogen. So phosphorus is from mineralized rocks. It's inside rocks. And so the first way it gets released by nature is through a process called weathering. Has anybody ever seen weathering occurring? Or seen the results of weathering of rock? Like erosion? Yes. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever seen some fantastic shapes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the Yeah. Has anybody been to Utah? Mm -hmm. Anybody been to Utah? What about the Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon arches. Grand Canyon's good. That's erosion with water, eroded away. Arches National Monument in Utah, it's all wind erosion. So weathering over time, the elements can erode away rock. That's very slow flux, right? So it's stored for long periods of time in rock. So that would be what? Would that be a source or a sink? Wait, what did you uh, For phosphates, if, uh, if, if we're talking about the mineral rock, is that a source or a sink? Is it releasing more than it accepts? Or is it taking more in and storing it and then releasing? Taking more, oh, yeah. taking more in? Yeah. So it's a sink. All right, so let's take a look at this. Here's a diagram here. So we have a lot of our soils and rock are containing phosphates. You see the number here? I don't know if you can see that from back there. What's that number? Is that 4 trillion? I don't know what the unit of measurement is. So we have that much phosphate is locked away in rocks. We mine it, and then soils contain it, and so we plants can take it up and move it around. So phosphate gets absorbed by plants, and then plants get eaten, and that's how you can get phosphates. That's typically how most land animals, consumers are getting it. How are how are ocean creatures getting phosphates? Uh, it's, it's, at the, it's in the bottom, like it's in the sand. Yeah. So it's in the sediment in the ocean, and it also can dissolve in the ocean. You see it's 90% here. Yeah. So what's this diagram illustrating? That the ocean like the, the um, sediment is like the biggest, or the, or the 
plants that grow in the tan, which have fungus, right. and then the fish eat them, and then, yeah. Right, so it could be either it's already dissolved in the water and released by decomposers, or uptake by some producers. Now remember, producers in the ocean include plants and seaweeds, but what else? What's our primary producer in an ocean? There's all of this. Is it krill? Uh, no. no. Oh, the, That's a consumer. Uh, what was it eating? The first thing. It's really small. Plankton. Plankton. Ah! Yay! SpongeBob would be proud of you. Right? Plankton. Evil plankton. Phytoplankton. It, it's photosynthetic. And so it, you know, it's taken up that phosphate. So that's, this is how nature does a lot of it. But notice in the middle of this diagram, this is how humans are disrupting it. We mine a lot of it. One of the best places to mine for phosphates is Florida. It's real Florida. And so we have that happening. We make it. it runs off the ocean. Okay. So, okay? so one of the things I'm going to hope to do with you guys to help, help learn this well is we're going to do an activity where we'll model this. You have Legos and toys and a little worksheet. So we'll do that later. So, so before you go, let me just restate. I'm shifting the assignment calendar. So restart that later today. It'll be all set. Um, okay. You still need a new chapter five. Yes. Finish your blog. Or, or update or. Or, you know, update your blog, fluff it if you want. Video yeah. and do the no, 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 you should be only doing a couple little changes to your blog, right? The blog is first. You don't like the way it sounds? Yeah. Well, I'm going to check it around there. Okay. I mean, you've had, you've had lots of time to tinker with it. Is so, this new blog? The uh, blog that they did on initial... Uh, oh, I didn't do that, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, you're, you're not going to. Can I just not change it then? Okay. You don't have to change it at all. If you feel like there's something you can change quickly, then do that. I'm going to stay on work for a little bit. I'm going to go to the library tonight and do a test correction. I'll be, I'll, well, yeah. I will not read in the library. Okay, what's mine? Are you going to be at the library before? Yeah. Like before? Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to be at the library I'm doing this. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. We have to do it Wednesday. Oh, no, I, I think the library is really excited. Like, two, right? Oh, no, I'm going to put this out. No, And I'll bring my textbook with all my annotations in it. Um, um, thank you so much. Oh, you did? Um, bye. What college do you go to? Oh, there's one. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll bring my textbook with all my annotations so we can just, like, eat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, sounds good. Today, we can do this, correct. We're going to do tonight. Hey, Chad, do you want to have me for the Thursday? Yeah, so I'm going home for the Thursday. So we'll have fun. Yeah, I'll be in class. She's in class. She's in class. She's in class. But she's in class. She said, Sarah said that she's in class. I'm sure she'll be on the list, too. I think she has to go back to class. She thinks Kings is Show me a blog. Let me see what yeah, you're so concerned about. Also, um, yeah, Kings is coming back too. Yeah. Okay, so, all right. So there's that. Picture of cleaning out the blog. Uh, or perhaps I can. Oh, you need to have citations. I do. Okay, then that, I think that's. All you have to, you can't really analyze anything. All I want is, what are we doing? You get that. How are we doing it? It looks like you got a nail to me. If you're unhappy with some wording, go ahead and mess with it. But it ain't clock and break it. It shouldn't be, it's, this one should not be anywhere nearly as complicated as the first one. 
because we only have one place we go, one objective. The blog, the one where we told the watershed, you talk about all this other stuff. That's great. But, um, I don't know how to, is that okay? The form of energy, yeah. Maybe say the form of energy in the, in, in the uh, animal plant cell. Because part of it that I want you to, to start focusing on, Charlie, as you write, is that you, you want to write for somebody like your parents, yeah. or who, who you're trying to teach them a little bit about science. Mm -hmm. So, when you write it just to me, I don't know if you're going to grow as much as a writer. Okay. Just write to me. Do you still want three or more quotes? Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And data counts. Data. Is, I said, when I said this to both groups. Data will count as quotes. So look, I can see three are red, and that's the minimum, right? I see a quote, you have to I see the data degrees. Marks. No. No. I see. You said this quote, but I don't know how to put it. Or you said both of those, that one, and then this one. I don't have to, I don't remember what the context was in that. You got all this data. You got all this other data. I don't think it's something you should be sweating at. I would worry about other stuff, personally. All right, let me take this off, turn off the recording. All right.